Hello again. I dance at Capri this time. They don't work right. <laughs> so like every record player pretty much that we have to deal with at this age, it needs a new cartridge and a stylus. Um, you see that one hanging off, but I've already undone the screw at the top. Let it hang so I could see what kind it needed. I just thought, by the way, how cool is that? <laughs> See, yeah, I thought I'd mention a couple of things about this. That that cartridge, this um, X5M, is hard to find. Really hard to find. So there's one, an SC5M, that you can put in there. You just have to, you know, connect the left and right channels together because this it's a stereo cartridge. Um, but electronically, very similar. Um, when they arrive, they often arrive with this bracket attached to the top. Um, so, if I can get that so if you see the little uh, bit on the end there, the brackets wrap round one of those at each end. You have to very carefully prise it up and off with a pair of tweezers to get it to fit in this. Otherwise, it would be hanging like you know five, six, seven mil too low and with that angle it would probably scrape the back end of itself across your vinyl while you were playing it so not the best idea so I'll put that cartridge in and then we'll see what's going on right so the other big problem this player had is the deck was stuck and I mean stuck rigid seized shut so um, often if, if it moves you know on its own but um, but the motor won't turn it then it's often a problem underneath or with the uh, spring that, that pulls the idler wheel onto this um, but if it's stuck rigid it's often this central pillar is um, well basically welded to the to the turntable so uh, I've already done quite a lot to this you have to, I'll show you what I, how I do it grab either side and just do this at first until you feel it start to come free and then more and more until you can start to turn it and then try to turn it more clockwise than you do anti-clockwise as you go around gradually it'll take you a while but you need to gradually try to work it up like this once it starts to become free though don't, until it's a certain way don't try pulling upward on it and gradually you'll release it so you can see what the issue is uh, dried on grease and absent grease in other places. You can see the line where there's kind of a ridge where it's all hardened on there. And I'll see if I can manage to show you. I don't know what we'll be able to see of that. On the inside edge, you know, it's quite a state. And that's why it was welded to it. That needs to move completely freely or the player just or it won't look right. when the old stuff is baked on like that there's a, there's a fairly easy way to get rid of that line there with the you know the sort of baked on ridge that was left there and then you can just sort of wipe the rest away and, and you're not getting this stuff everywhere take whatever you call this in your country cotton wool bud try to use one with a cardboard stem not a plastic one Because throwing plastic away is shit. And then just apply it where that ridge is, just where that ridge is. Don't, there's no, no need to get rid of um, of where the, uh, the the bulk of it is, like this. Because you don't want to get too much of this stuff anywhere. You, you just want to try and remove that ridge 
so that because otherwise you've got to put quite a lot of pressure around trying to scrub it away and you can you know um, rock the thing from side to side and cause wear and cause the turntable to run out of whack so I'll just I'll keep doing this then take a, a clean cloth that's got so little water on that you can barely tell there is water on and just go from the bottom pull up and just um, get rid of any of that alcohol that could be left behind then do it with a dry part so you get rid of any water that can be getting left behind and then that's now just a clean enough dry piece of metal now it's much better if you can use a, a grease you can apply with your finger but I can't today can't get any because of Covid lockdown but hey -ho. Um, if you've got to use a spray thing on something like this do something like this cover the immediate area around it and be careful all it needs, very small amount. And then the tiniest, tiniest bit inside this edge. And fit the tool back together. Lovely. And that's how it should work. So give it a quick check. By the way before I start doing any of this stuff on this kind of gear I've always checked that it's not going to short out and stuff like that first but I spare you that boring detail at the beginning I might do a video at some point just about that so you can apply it to everything Now you could probably hear that where there was um, a, uh, as I was putting the volume and control up and down, you could hear it sort of jumping in and out like the signal was disappearing. That's because the pot needs cleaning. Um, I'll show by the pot I mean potential meters is, is, is what you call a volume control if you don't know. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. It's very easy. should mention that someone had tried to free this before it came to me and failed but they had removed the circuit from the centre that, that keeps this pin down kind of like a washer with a quarter of it missing off of one side so kind of this shape you know kind of curls round and it's slightly smaller than the thing it goes around so as you push it on it kind of stretches out and clamps onto it so that that uh, holds this down I don't have one the right size so uh, it, when whenever I need to turn this on its side now till I put one of those on now it's free 
I'm just going to put a couple of pieces of masking tape just to stop this because otherwise as you lift this up this player this thing will just slide clean off of this now so starting from the input side we take these two um, caps off the dials by just prising them off if you can and then there are two nuts there one at the bottom one at the top which is very hard to find remove them and then the whole thing will just fall off so these caps are pretty crummy they'll need changing out to know about that one these ceramic sort of looking things I don't think really ever should have been in an audio set <laughs> Um, these kind of thing, a poly thing, poly cap, they're, they're the best kind of replacement an audio circuit, really, or at least in this situation. So that's those two replaced, and uh, that cap and that resistor were out too, so I've done it. So the next step is going to have to be removing this, of course, so first pull the tubes out before you do it, obviously. Um, then you need to sort of, I don't know if I can hold this camera, get these little clips, that's it what I'm doing, yeah, bend them away like this, so that when you do, the wires can come free. And you can lift that chassis away from it. There's some more on the other side. Also, this little plastic thing there, I should think that you lift this, pull the wires out, which I'll do with two hands <laughs> when I put the camera down. And that's done, it's a good point to, I don't know how well you can see any of it, but back out all of the stuff that's there before you move anything around in a major way mostly so that you don't breathe it all in in a cloud of 60 year old stuff that's that done at least to a basic level and look what I found spotted just before it went up the pipe the circlip that was there to hold in the uh, uh, turntable, the one that was missing. Well, at least that's what it looks like. We shall find out. So I've measured some of these resistors. Um, you see the one there under that sort of mustard coloured capacitor, and it go. It's uh, from the right there, brown, black, yellow. That's 100k. That one measures 186 point something thousand ohms so that one's 80 something percent out the one with the three orange stripes that's 33k obviously that's I think that measured at 38 and a half something like that um, the the um, 100 ohm resistor across that cap measured at about 82 so that's almost 20 percent out um, some of them I haven't, I haven't measured this big one yet um, I just thought I'd mention that I, I'm pretty sure all of these resistors should be changed. I mean, if they're you know over five percent out and they look a little crumbly like that, they should be changed anyway. If they're you know eighty-five percent out and looking a bit crumbly, then they have to be changed. Okay, so they were all so far out. I've just changed everything under the tubes I've got to focus again just some things to mention make sure the capacitors you use are the right voltage rating or above um, make sure the resistors are the right wattage rating or above and I put a, a totally new ground tag on there because well there's no point using the old crummy thing that's been there you know and, and, and tidying it off when they probably cost like two pence each 
so when you do that bear in mind that they've always been on there for ages when you take it off scratch the surface with a file sandpaper whatever until it's bright silver before you put the new tag on then you know that it's actually making contact with the chassis electrical contact with the chassis the electrolytic capacitors again this is for a customer and I'm only supposed to be doing what's necessary so they all check out fine with an ESR meter um, I can't, there's no hum no sign of leakage so really I've got to leave it at that I did change the resistor though because that was you know 10-15% out of whack um, and uh, one thing I did do because it's uh, those electrolytics are old and I can't really change them what I did is um, I, I used a, a 5 watt resistor instead of the 2 or 3 watt one that was in there so that it won't get as hot so therefore not challenging the capacitors quite so as the old one would have again here yeah, I think the resistor that was in here was probably 3 or 4 watts maybe 5, I used a 7 just to make sure and everything's insulated against any possibility of touching anything else of course any shorts, I do need to clean it, I haven't done that yet all back together, clips in place cleaned out the tube sockets got the tubes back in last thing to do, I'll just clean these pots up a bit by spraying uh, contact cleaner through the gap and moving them about and that's all done. <laughs>